Okay. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being on uh, this morning. Always um, interesting times, unprecedented times that we're going through. And so, as, as always, Marathon Chamber of Commerce is trying to connect our members, friends, colleagues, uh, and, and business owners and, and staff, you know, with resources to help them. And, and one of these here today, I think, is a, a very valuable one as we begin our reopening of the Florida Keys and our businesses, essentially, to visitors and whatnot. Um, it's, I think it's important to, to learn and relearn a lot of tools, especially for marketing and, and marketing with the new normal uh, that, that we're living in right now. And so we are really honored and happy to have um, Scott Ganello here with us with uh, Lionfish Central. And uh, don't let the lionfish fool you. Scott's a, a software, a tech guy who understands internet, digital marketing, SEO, search engine optimization, and especially Google and, and, and the number of other platforms to help our businesses uh, perform at their best in normal times, but especially now in as we keep referring to as the new normal. So um, Scott has a lot of experience with this. And, and as you, as you could see his passions with uh, controlling lionfish. So a lot of the proceeds, a lot of um, what he does goes back into his 501c3 not for profit to help control uh, this invasive species, you know, that is most definitely affecting our natural reef systems uh, in the Florida Keys and, and around the world um, as well. So we're happy to, to have you here, Scott. Um, Scott's going to talk about, so Google My Business, utilizing YouTube, and then utilizing your own websites because um, it really these really are powerful tools that could help not only drive traffic but the customers you want to your business. So without further ado, I'll let you take the reins over, Scott, and thank you so much again for your time, my friend. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity to um, help out in any way I can. Um, so let me start the, the presentation. Um, if you... At the bottom of your screen, there is a chat box that you can um, use to get online to leave, leave us a message. Um, it's slow this morning. Um, so can any of you see that yet? No, huh? Hang on. Let me share the screen, share, and then go back here. The joys of technology. Okay, can you all see my screen? Okay, good. So, um, what I'd like to talk about is a few things. Number one, the Keys are opening up um, June 1st, and there's a lot of businesses on the Keys that are really high tech, and then there's some that are uh, low tech. They're just, you know, the, the ability of being uh, at the right place at the right time gets a lot of business and traffic coming through. Uh, but Google has a lot of tools that are free, and between Google and your website, there's a ton of stuff you can do to help get yourself um, back in the game uh, as we open up. So a um, little bit about uh, myself and what we're going to do here today. And of course, it doesn't want to seem to be working here. So here we go. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a businessman. I've been uh, self-employed since, you know, early 1980, uh, actually 70s. Uh, with my first paper route, but got a couple of books out there. One is uh, Common SEO Mistakes. It's about the, the mistakes we see every day working with clients um, when they call us or when we take them on as a new client. And the other one is called Climbing the Food Chain. It's, it's uh, how I grew my business, learning from a bunch of fish, actually, uh, in the food chain and what their technique they use to survive through evolution um, for millions of years in that level of the food chain. I applied that to the business world and did very well with it. So. I do a lot of speaking for SCORE, podcasts, chambers of commerce, associations, colleges, pretty much anybody that there's an audience for. Um, and my, my full-time day job as a consultant, we do a lot of search engine work for companies, software development, web development. We help companies with their e-commerce and we help strategize with their analytics and look at all their data to see how they're doing and where they could do better. Um, and, I, and I'm the president of Lionfish Central. We're a charitable nonprofit. Uh, to help in the fight against the lionfish. And it, it actually, um, this came about because I, I was at Island uh, Fish Company one night uh, with a buddy of mine, and I met Bucky and his wife, Ariel, and they started talking about the lionfish, and I had no idea. And they, they, it was nice seeing the perspective of the you know, diver for the state and then a commercial diver's perspective of it. And I, I realized I'm going to start doing some research on it. And the research I found online was really... Um, Mediocre at best, right? So bad websites, they, they, they 
didn't have any kind of e-commerce capabilities for taking donations. Great efforts in the lionfish fight, but not um, anything great to, you know, to get found so that they could do their job better. And, and I want everyone to succeed. So we started this to help companies like that. And we actually help for profit companies as well. If you're doing anything in the lionfish world, uh, let us help you. Um, actually, one of our first clients that we took on was Castaway Restaurant. Um, the site was, you know, as he would say, pretty not good. And uh, we ended up building him a new website to help promote his lionfish on the, on the menu. He's one of the few restaurants in this country that has lionfish full-time on the menu. Sure, other companies have it on weekends or specials, but full-time. So he's out there on a weekly basis going after to, to not only catch the lionfish, but to educate people on it. Um, you know, with, with the reporters coming in from around the world that he, you know, explains about it. So um, we do everything from we give free websites, we do uh, advertising. You know, we have a Google ad budget that Google gave us for a donation every month. So we can do some free advertising for companies. We do uh, analytics for them, SEO. Um, so we, we help them out so that they can continue to do what they do best because uh, we can't do everything. But we want to make sure that they survive really well. So let's get into it, right? Um, Google pretty much owns everything, and Google is going to uh, let you um, succeed or fail. Um, a lot of people think it's, it's their choice, but it's actually Google's choice, right? Um, and if you don't drink the Kool-Aid, there's going to be some issues. So one of the ways Google put a lot of money into the last couple of years is Google My Business. And so if you've ever done any kind of Google search, you see that big map that shows up uh, with three or four businesses located on it. And then you have your, you know, your organic results below that. Um, it's a free product. And if you're not using it, you should be. Um, even if you work out of your house, there's a way to uh, define your location as you know, from Key West to Key Largo or just Marathon or wherever you want. So um, it's a free product. And it puts you on the map. And it's free. Um, so this first search you look at is a generic search. And what happens here is um, if you type in restaurants in the Florida Keys or in Marathon, it'll give you a selection of what they think is a good selection for you, right? So it comes from right when you get down to Marathon, you know, Island Fish Company, all the way down to the end to Castaway. Um, and it gives you a little bit of information. Now, if you do a lot of different searches for different products or companies, you'll see different layouts. So this one has three um, restaurants and then a picture on the other end, on the right. Sometimes there's a website button. Sometimes there's a direction button. Uh, sometimes there's nothing. Sometimes there's reviews in there. So everything is relative for Google. And you want to make sure you're checking off all those boxes that they like so that you can have a good chance to show up in this search if they're looking for something. Um, so because this was a generic search, they got generic results here. And um, this map on the top, you can click on it, and then you see the full map of the area with a whole bunch of different results. So this is the search view, and if you did a specific search, you would get the um, specific review, right, uh, search. So here's what you got to know. This is, this is made for mobile use. Serve people on their desktops. But you're in the keys, right? And when, when people come to the Keys, they're not bringing their laptop in the car to, to surf the internet. They're using their mobile. And this is made to show up quickly and to have a quick link to get directions, to get a phone number, to click on, to look at the reviews. So it's made for mobile users. And you know anybody coming into the Keys to vacation or to you know, tour around the, the, the Keys, they're using their mobile device. So this is really important to understand because if you're not on here or you're not using the, utilizing this properly, you're missing out. And let's face it, we're opening up, but we're opening up at uh, lower levels, right? So the bad news is a lot of businesses went out of business. Um, and you would think, well, there's more market share for the remaining businesses. Well, not so much initially because they're only opening up at 50% capacity or 25% capacity, or some aren't even opening yet. So what little market share is out there is even more important now than ever. So this is a product that you should be spending a lot of time on at least once a week doing something in, this, in the Google My Business. 
And every industry has a different layout. So if I was a, looking for a plumber, there would be probably the website link, uh, there'd probably be reviews, it would be a different layout. Um, so it changes for everything. There's no like one standard or one size fits all. So you gotta keep that in mind. Um, but it gives you a wealth of information uh, and it's at their fingertips. And as people are driving by, they can quickly click on it, get directions, go to your business, go to your location, go to your event, um, whatever they're looking for, or call you, make reservations, um, whatever, they're, whatever they're trying to do. Um, Google ups, updates this themselves, right? So um, you would like to think you have the, the chance to do um, whatever you want to do, but not so much. Google makes the changes, right? And if you look at the, the results over there, do you see anything weird? Right, so Florida Keys Steak and Lobster, dine-in is not available, delivery is not available, right? Island Fish Company, dine-in is not available. Now, uh, Castaway had that as well, but because we work with him, we went in there and had to physically change that. So Google made the decision to say there's no dine-in uh, and there's no delivery, um, but they left takeout available because most restaurants can do takeout. So it wasn't the users that changed or updated it, it was Google. And you've got to be on this at least once a week because Google will make changes on a regular basis. And you have to understand that they may change something whether you like it or not. So make sure you're checking out your Google My Business page. Make sure you're searching for yourself so it shows up so you can see any changes that, it, that were made. And Google actually will change your name sometime, which, you know, it's your name, right? You put your name in there. So a lot of companies will say something like, uh, you know, best sushi place in Marathon. And if the name is called, you know, Marathon Sushi, which I know it's not just an example, but, um, if it's not what Google wants it to be, they will go and make the update for you. So you need to keep an eye on your Google My Business page regularly. This is the very first impression someone's gonna get for you if you're lucky enough to show up on that search. Um, so there's a second, um, hang on, why is this not working here? Okay, so there's a second layout, right? If you do a very specific search for uh, Castaway Restaurant Marathon or Castaway Marathon, this is going to show up on the right side. All right, and this is where you get all of the um, expanded information for you, right? You've got um, your website, you've got directions, you can save this search. So let's say, uh, let's say you're in, you know, Massachusetts and you're coming down to the Keys and you're doing some searches, you can save this so you can pull it up quickly when you get here to find it, get the directions and everything else you need. So again, it's trying to make, Google's trying to make it very easy for you to navigate these businesses, right? So I had to go in yesterday and fix this because Castaway doesn't do delivery. So I changed that. So today, if you go in there, that's not gonna be available. Um, but it gives you your location, it gives you the hours you're open, gives you your, uh, a menu key, because it's a restaurant, which is basically just the website. Um, and then the reviews very important but also if you look down at the very bottom it, it says suggest an edit or own this business right so this is where it can be a little dicey if you're not watching your google my business page because some people will suggest an edit and if you don't answer that edit after a certain amount of time google will make that edit live um and John owns this business, there's no doubt. And actually, I'm in there as one of the owners because I go in there at, and update the site as well, the Google My Business page. So it says, do you own this business? So there's a couple reasons for that. One is, if you don't have a Google My Business page, sometimes Google will make one for you. Um, and they will just say, well, we're going to put it out there because people are looking for that. And then you have the ability to get ownership of it. Sometimes businesses kind of go out of business or they don't maintain it or the quote unquote web company that was managing it is out of business and the owner's trying to get access to it, right? Because the sometimes web companies don't give you access to your own stuff, which is crazy, but unfortunately it's true. So you gotta be careful that no one's going to try to grab the business or suggest edits that aren't true. Because you have to go in there and say, no, don't make these edits or don't make these changes and put them back. So very important, and, and Google My Business is a great way to stay in front of your customers and potential customers. You know, it also has 
photos, right? We're in the Keys. People are coming here for the, the dream, for the adventure, for the vacation, right? It's all about a visual place, the beautiful waters, the beautiful palm trees, the, the reefs, the, you know, the, the tourist spots. The, it's just a place where people dream about coming here. I know because I've got a lot of friends that are chomping at the bit, waiting for the keys to open up so that they can get in there. Um, so put some pictures in there. Put a lot of pictures in there, right? Those pictures are going to be clicked on and looked at. So make sure you're putting good pictures in here, right? The other thing is other people can put their own pictures in there with a review. So you want to make sure you have really good pictures all the time. Because sometimes you can get a, you know, an angry review, you know, because we see that a lot, uh, especially these days, where people just feel like they have to go out and leave bad reviews, and they may put up a bad picture. So you want to drown those out with really good pictures. And it's a visual thing. Make it look like a destination. Make it look like uh, a, an adventure or a lifestyle that people are trying to come to, right? So you have the ability to... Fill this up with a ton of pictures. You can put a video in there uh, or a couple of videos where people can see your videos as they're going through, right? There's also a great thing here you can do for posts, right? So basically, you can put your own like little mini blog in here. So I kind of think that Google set up this part of the, the product uh, in a way to kind of diminish websites. Websites aren't going away but they want to have this be more powerful than your website. So it gives you the ability to write little posts. And you can do up to 750 characters. So you're only looking at a couple of paragraphs, maybe three small paragraphs. You can put a picture in there. And then at the bottom, you have an option to do learn more. And you can put a website in there. Uh, call now. You can put a phone number in there. Um, you know, buy now. Uh, make a reservation. So there's a, a bunch of stuff you can do uh, to keep people on your Google My Business page, right? And those posts are searchable. That information is searchable. You have events, you can put events in it. Now, Google is smart in the sense that they only made it last for three weeks because they don't want old content on there. And Google only wants fresh and relevant content. So if they didn't let it go away, you would have blogs on there or posts on there um, that you can just turn around and leave there and it's going to get old and Google's not going to go to it. So they, they literally del delete it um, every three weeks. So they want you to come back here and use this. They're trying to get you to use this more than your website. So just keep that in mind. There's also some uh, uh, effects that you can do for um, texting, message messaging you, or just you know clicking on the phone and calling you directly. So again, they make this very easy for you, number one, to get found, but also to give you a wealth of information for the people that are looking to find you. Your website's there. If you're a service company, you won't have a menu item there, but you'll have services and products. So every industry is different. So every layout for, the, for each industry is different, right? So there's a ton of stuff you can do depending on the category of business that you do. But again, be careful because they can um, change it for you. They can uh, have people try to own this business, right? Or people can suggest edits. And if you're not watching this and you're not on there, you're not gonna notice, right? The other thing is you've got reviews. It's good to go in there when you do get a review and reply to them. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry you, you had an issue. Uh, give us a call, we're here to help. You know, that type of thing. People do look at the reviews, but they also look at the responses. Because if the response is, screw you, you shouldn't be here, blah, 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 they're probably not going to come visit you. But if the review is very nice and polite, they're probably going to say, yeah, that review is probably just some angry person or whatever. So in the review area, you can uh, make sure you're, you're letting them know how you feel about that, good, bad, and different, whatever. Um, the other thing is, people can leave photos in the review. So if you're going to encourage people to leave you reviews, um, you could also say, you know, put a photo up, put your favorite photo up with that review. I just bought this beautiful necklace, check it out. Here's some pictures of the necklace, right? So uh, it's good and bad. My actual SEO company, 
for our page has a car on there and it looks like we're a car detailing company. It just happens to be that one of the reviews left his car detailing picture up there and he owns my page and I'm still trying to remove it. So um, fill yours with photos because in the end, Google goes in there and looks at those photos and shows it to a lot of people. So that's another thing that you can um, capitalize on because those photos is selling your lifestyle, your brand, uh, the adventure of the keys. Let's go here. So when you do, again, it's free. And if you do have it, then you know how to do it. If you don't have it, it's free. And it's, it's an important thing because you're getting some very powerful um, recognition for free. Um, you just log in with your Gmail. And if you don't have an account, you create it. And you basically, you know, say add a new location, click on the button, and follow the instructions. And then there you go. They're going to send you a postcard to verify that you are a legitimate business. And then once you verify it, uh, five, six days later, it's live. And now you're marketing it. And then once you log in, this is the menu on the left that you're going to see, right? That menu is what helps you uh, control everything. So this is the post, right? It's right up top, front and center, because Google wants you to do stuff for that, your account. So there's the post button where you can click on it and you know slowly start filling up your different posts for the search engine and again those are very searchable your info is where you have all your information your web address your hours what you offer your services or your menu items um you, you know all that stuff right um this is where you put your links your phone number your address the name of your business so that's all in the info side of things um the menu item I see what they're trying to do. They want to keep, they want to own everything, right? So all these menu.com links that they put on there, they want to have their menu items, not somebody else's. The challenge with that, if you go to Castaway, you, you virtually get like a newspaper full of menu items, right? So it's not really feasible to do that. But I would suggest if you have a menu that you put a couple of favorites, right? Like happy hour sushi, $7.95, you know, or select happy hour sushi. Um, 7.95. So you could do those types of things that don't change regularly, just to have something on there. Um, you know, but play around with it. Your insights gives you all your information: how many people visited it on the map side, on the search side, how many people called you, how many people asked for directions, how many people looked at your photos. There is a wealth of information. The reviews you can go in here and manage them through here. If you want to have messaging. Uh, let's say you're a 24-7 plumber. You can have people text you, call you 24-7. You can put that in there. You can put the hours. Um, you know, in some cases it's good. In some cases it's night. Like on date night, I wouldn't recommend having it because, you know, your phone might be texting or ringing off the phone. Um, photos. Same thing. Fill it up with photos. Let people come in here and stay on your Google My Business page and look at all the photos you have out there. Very important. Um, so... Once you're set up and running, you're going to have all these options to go fill it out. And again, I would suggest going in there uh, at least once a week to maintain your Google My Business page because it will change on you. All right. The another product that Google uses is YouTube. Uh, they tried doing Google Video back in the day, and YouTube was just ticking their butts. So they bought them, like they do everything, right? They gobbled them up. Um, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, next to Google, the first largest, right? It's amazing how many people use YouTube, right? Especially looking for stuff to do in the keys. So again, it's another free product that you can be doing making your own commercials, right? So it's the second most popular platform for social media. Think about that. You know, there's a lot of social media out there. This is number two, and it's the second largest search engine in the world. Billions of viewers per day, not just a few, you know, million, but billions per day, and 70% come from mobile devices. So if you think about that, I would say in the keys, I would say probably 95 or more percent comes from mobile devices. So again, people are on their phone all the time down in the keys because they're not carrying around a laptop. Um, and... The average user spends 40 minutes on YouTube a day when they go in there. 40 minutes. That's a lot of viewing. 
it actually, I think there's more people looking at YouTube than TV, than you know, regular TV these days. Uh, it's an incredible platform and it's totally underutilized. You know, I started looking for stuff in Marathon, Florida, um, and some stuff is, you know, 11 months ago, three years ago, five years ago, one year ago. And look at the views, 8.7 thousand, 11 thousand, 112 thousand from three years ago. 112 thousand people or views were looked at for Marathon to Florida Keys, right? So if you want to capture people's attention looking to come down to Marathon or to Big Pine or to Key West or, you know, wherever, use this platform because it's, it's highly searchable. Um, and the, the numbers are just, you know, incredible uh, of the people going to it, right? So what do you do to upload to YouTube, right? What, do you, what are you putting in there? Well, I would say put everything except the kitchen sink. Unless you're a plumber, of course, then definitely put in the kitchen sink. But you can put a ton of stuff in there, um, and you're not forcing people to look at it, but if they search it and it pops up, they have the choice to look at it, right? So you could do your business updates. Frequently asked questions are a great thing to do, right? Maybe a one to two minute video per question. It's just a great way to fill the search engine, right, the second largest search engine with your information. Um, and it's easy to do and it and then you can use that later, right? You can put it back on your website later and help people Talk to you kind of face-to-face -face asking these questions and finding them and then you can you know face-to-face -face say to them What the uh, what the questions and answers are right if you've got events coming up You can put those in there testimonials if you have happy customers get them on film, you know do a video This is you know, I'm so happy to be here the the, this beautiful gift shop, it has the most incredible blah, blah, blah. You know, you gotta come down, if you're gonna be in Marathon, check it out, that type of thing, right? Most people are happy on vacation, they're willing to do that, um, and it just adds more information for you. Put some tips out there. If you're gonna be coming to the Keys, or you're gonna be doing snorkeling trips, here are some tips. And just do a bunch of videos for that. Interviews, uh, interview the owners of the business. Uh, you know, whatever you think you can do, you can do it, and it's free. Let me remind you, this is free. Um, so it's very powerful. Um, if you're gonna do a video, a lot of people just take the video, start it right there, and then upload it right off from their phone, which is good, it's okay, but if you're gonna to try to do something for your business and you wanna make it look a little bit more professional, you could have an intro of about you know three to five seconds maybe. You know, Maybe it has your logo, or maybe it has the the palm tree waving in the wind with the sunset with your name over it um, or whatever and then it kind of blends into the actual meat of your video and then at the end have about a five second exit which is again your logo and have your website your phone number maybe your address uh, information that people can can uh, look at to know who you are um, so I would, I would suggest doing that. And if you have a PC or a Mac, there's free software on there that you could quickly and easily do it. It's not that hard. If it is difficult, find your neighbor's kid. I'm sure they're light years ahead of us right now with the technology that they're doing. They could make something for you really quick and you know, be very happy to do that. Um, so everything on Google is all about the details. People think, well, I have a website, so I'm going to show up. Or I have a video, so I'm going to show up. That's not true. Um, they go through 240 different algorithms to figure out if you're even going to show up, and if so, where. And it might be, you know, page 500, um, or it might be the fifth one on the top page. So it's in the details, right? When you title the, the video itself before you upload to YouTube, give it a searchable title, right? So gift shops in Marathon, Florida, or Florida Keys gift shops, right? Something that people are searching for. And then when you upload it, Google knows that that was the name it was uploaded at. Give it a title as well, a searchable title. Not just, hey, check it out, uh, but do a nice searchable title. Maybe list the location, because if people are looking for things in Marathon, Florida, the word Marathon is going to pop up, right? They're looking for gift shops, they're looking for sushi, they're looking for restaurants or snorkeling or scuba. It's going to show up, right? And then the description. This is the part that people find what they're looking for is through the description people make. And I see people day after day uploading a blog or a video 
and having, uh, oh yeah, fishing and marathon. And that's it. You know, not a lot of information. Um, you should be filling this up with a ton of information, right? So this guy I look over here, South Florida Fishing Channel, right? You should have a ton of information, links, keywords, phrases, titles, calls to action, anything you can put in there, put in there, right? So if you look at the picture on the right, he's got a little one paragraph to get you going, right? Very searchable, Marathon Florida, fishing, um, you know, fishing, catch, cleaning, cook, cook time, all that. Then he's got your title, and it just jumps out at you, right? He's got some dark, bold lines. He's got a title, the fishing links are here for you, right? So he's giving you resources. So he's got links to his channel on his website. He's got link to his email that you can email him. He's got links to some more videos out there. Um, and at the very bottom, he's got a Amazon link, right? A lot of these companies that go to Amazon have a link. So if you click on their link, your cookies get picked up and anything you buy, he gets a commission on. So he's filled this up with a ton of information that you can fill in as pretty much as much as you want um, to help the people once they do find it, stay on there and use those links. So he's had almost 41,000 views. So that's 41,000 potential money-making opportunities this guy has or potential new customers for his website or commissions from um, Amazon, right? Or different projects he's got that or, or followers on Instagram or Facebook. So, you know, this description area is where you get found. So take advantage of it, right? You, you need to capitalize on this description part uh, in order for you to do well in the, in the search engines for videos. And these videos show up both in the regular search engine occasionally, but also in the YouTube search engine. So the more information you put in there to help Google figure out where you're going to be found, the better you're going to do, right? That's the important thing. Google needs to know where to put you and you're just helping them make that job easier. All right, so what do we do, right? How do we upload? Well, again, let me re reiterate, it's free. This is free advertising. So first of all, you have to create an account with your Gmail. So if you're logged into your Gmail account for, for checking your email, you just go to YouTube and you say, you know, create a YouTube channel if, if you don't already have one. Um, there's a whole bunch of buttons, right? You can, you can customize it, put a nice big banner in there. This is Lionfish University, another client of ours. Um, they do a lot of great stuff uh, for Lionfish. Uh, they have a nice banner across the top. Um, they have their L for their, you know, their Gmail account for this uh, would show up there. Um, you get, there's a customization button. Uh, you can go there and look at all their videos. Uh, you can go to their homepage and have their videos that they want you to see. Uh, there's an upload button. So there's a lot you can do here. And your best bet is go on there and play with it. Upload some videos, right? And if you don't like them, delete them. But get to know this and get to use this. Uh, it's very important. Um, so to upload, you just basically click that thing that looks like a hot water bottle with a hospital sign on it, which I guess it's supposed to be a camera or something. Um, you basically click that icon and it pops up and says, okay, upload your video. And that's about as easy as, as it is, right? You click it, upload it, and it starts uploading it. While it's uploading, there's a whole bunch of information you can fill in, right? Um, what's the title? Where's your description? Is it public viewing? Can people share it? You know, is it a private viewing? Can they leave a review? Are those reviews public? You know, you just kind of go through the, the, uh, the back end and answer the questions. And there's even three different pictures of the video at the bottom that you can choose from that it shows up on. So if you look at the two videos on the bottom right, um, those video pictures were chosen to show up in the feed. So, and if you don't like that, you can upload your own photo and it'll show that in the feed. So that way you don't have a picture that's fading into another scene and it looks blurry and it doesn't look good, right? So you can actually, you know, really customize your videos. And again, you're in the keys, right? People love to come down here because it's about the adventure, it's about the lifestyle. So make them look really great. Um, and it, it'll, it'll pay off for you. Uh, and then once you get it, you start sharing it, right? There's a link on the video that it's a share button and it gives you a little, um, 
a little link that you can just drop everywhere. And we'll talk about that more with the website, but um, it, you can start sharing it. And again, this is the second largest search engine in the world. So utilizing it, right? Let's talk about sharing. First of all, sharing it is free. Oops, hang on. Sharing it is free, right? Um, it doesn't cost you anything to put it on Facebook. It doesn't cost you to put a link on Twitter or your Instagram page or um, your emails and newsletters, all your social media accounts. You can put a link in the text messages, uh, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. There's just a ton of places you can put these links, right? So basically, this is like a free commercial for you. You're basically making free commercials. If a news agency came to you and said, hey, uh, we'd like to give you a free TV commercial, you would jump at that. You'd be a fool not to. And the problem is they will show it a couple of times and then they'll never put it on again. This is a free commercial that never goes away, right? The, the old media style is spray and pray. You need to hit 100,000 viewers in hopes that they're sitting in front of the TV at the exact moment, at the exact time they're thinking about the exact product that you're trying to sell, right? The number, the odds are just minimal. The difference in the search engines is people are looking for a very specific thing, and if your video or your commercial matches that, you show up. So it's a much different paradigm shift from the old way of commercials to the new way of commercials. So again, your videos are your commercials, right? Um, put them on your website. Put them in frequently asked questions on your website. Put them under services. Here's our service. Here's our products. And more importantly, the COVID-19 update. People coming to the keys want to know that your business is COVID-19 uh, properly cleaned and uh, meeting all the guidelines, and they can feel comfortable coming to your store, your restaurant, your salon, your resort. You know, do some updates on those. Uh, when COVID-19 goes away and we're looking at our next, you know, emergency or whatever that is going to be, um, you can go in and delete that. So, you know, again, you're going, you're going to a uh, a group of people that are looking for your specific product or service or location, and you, you get to sit in front of them and talk to them and they get to see you, your personality, um, your excitement, your passion. Um, use it, utilize Google YouTube. You need to, it's, it's hugely important. Um, and again, when people go on there and spend 40 minutes, that's a lot of searching, that's a lot of looking. Um, it would be really nice if people spent 40 minutes looking at your business, looking at your videos, looking at your learning videos, your, your questions, your products, your services. Um, and again, these are free commercials. It doesn't cost you anything. And it doesn't cost you anything to post them places, right? And especially in the keys, people come here because they want the lifestyle. They want the vacation. They want the adventure. They, they want the beauty. They want the, the, the feeling of being free. They, they want all of that. And it's, it's not hard to do some really cool videos that's gonna capture their attention and keep them on your YouTube channel. All right, here's the more technical one, websites, right? Google uh, affects your websites. It affects it if it's gonna be found, it affects it on so many levels, right? Um, your website is your business. If nobody knows who you are, and they find you on a Google My Business page and they link to your website, this is your first impression, right? It's your commercial. This is a never-ending commercial that's online 24-7, the website, right? So make it impressive because you only get a few seconds. We look at the data for traffic and you don't have that much time to capture someone's attention. Um, they will be on and off within six seconds if it takes too long to load or if it's, you know, really ugly or if it looks like it was built in 1998 um, or it hasn't been updated. Um, you know, you, the good news is you might get them on Google My Business. The bad news is when they go to your website, they leave you and then you lose them on both. So make sure your website is working really well and it's impressive, right? Um, because that first impression is it. That's it. You only have a few seconds to capture them. Um, but your website is so much more than just a website. It can help you become more efficient, right? Oh, you're downloading stuff. Here's some in information that you need to download. Uh, I went to a restaurant the other day, and on the end of the table, they had a QR code. You snap it, and it pulls up the menu. 
So they're not doing any menus, right? So it's a little bit more safer for the COVID uh, policy. Um, and the good news of that is you can send them right to your website, again, bringing traffic to your website. Uh, you can have them download the menu. So now they have the menu on their phone because they want to come back, right? Um, or if they, uh, you want to do your COVID-19 stuff, they can QR code before they walk in. Or there's just a ton of stuff you can do to help get that information out there, right? And Google tracks all of it. The more you do, the more it impresses Google, the better you're going to do in the search engines, right? Um, you can inform your customers why you're better off than your competitors, right? Or why it's better off buying in your store than it is online. So you can help them understand that, which can make your job easier and bring them to your store. So the question is, when you look at your website, what are you known for? Um, and is it what you want to be known for, right? So before you go back on your website today, think about what you want to be known for. Like, what's the impression you want to make? when people come to it and then go, go log onto your website, go pull it up and see if that matches what you think you want, right? Again, websites are hugely important. They're not going to go away and it's a way to help things, uh, help your business become more easier, right? Frequently asked questions, let people learn before they call you up and ask the same question over and over and over, right? I wrote the book, Common SEO Mistakes, not because you know, I wanted to be an author of, you know, SEO. I wrote it because we heard the same questions over and over and over, and they were wrong. You know, people just didn't understand what it was, and they thought, well, I'm going to do this, and that's what SEO is. No, it's not. So we built the book, uh, or wrote the book, so for less than five bucks, you know, we can even send it to them and say, read this first, and it educates them, right? So educate people on your website. Make it easier for them to come to your store with less questions for you. Um, so, the data. A lot of people think SEO is just having Google Analytics. Do you do SEO? Oh yeah, I've got Google Analytics on my site. Do you ever log in and look at it? No. In part, um, it can make your eyes hurt, right? There's so much data. Oh, and by the way, it's free. All these Google products are free. And it's, you know, people say, well, you know, if I had a crystal ball, you do. It's called Google Analytics. It's called Search Console. It's called Google My Business. All that data, they tell you where people are coming from. How long are they staying on your site? What's the most popular page on your site? How long do they stay on that page? That's important because if you know what the most popular page is, you can put some more calls to action, like click here to save 20%, or make a reservation, or online order, or check this out you know, sign up for our newsletter. So Google tells you what's working and what's not. And I know it's a ton of stuff to look at and it's confusing and, you know, Google does things for developers, not so much for the average um, web user, you know, the average web searcher. Um, and I think sometimes they think it's great, but the average person may look at that and go, I just don't get it. And even, you know, Sean, Rosanna, and I, when we work, like, they changed again and we got to relearn things, right? So they're always changing. So it's not the easiest thing to learn, but there's a few things you can look at that can tell you what's working for you. If you don't have Google Analytics installed, you need to put it on your website today. If you don't have Google Search Console, which again is a free service, you need to put that onto your site and submit your site map, which has them going through it and looking at your site. If you don't have Google My Business, you need that today. You need YouTube, right? So you can see all the data from all these different platforms, right? And better data equals better decisions. And I know is for a lot of people, you know, you always hear, oh, you need to be on this site. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. If we did everything we needed to do, we wouldn't have time for our business. Right? And I don't think it would help you that much. There's a few things that you really should use. And this is one, Google Analytics. Google Search Console, that's another one. Because the amount of data they tell you, they tell you exactly what phrase people typed in to find you. And they tell you exactly what position you showed up on the search engine. So if you know you, found that, uh, you were found on the second page for this exact phrase 500 times, then that second page result is 
so much closer to the top page, you can go into your website and write a couple more blogs about that. And then probably in a week or so, you're going to be showing up on the top page. So the data is not fun, but it's so easy to figure out what to do once you know how to look at it. So Google tells you everything that's working and what's not. So let's say you're spending money on Facebook, right? Oh, you need to be on Facebook ads. Okay, you're spending money on Facebook. You can go into Google and say, show me the traffic from Facebook came in, right? You know, I was working um, with a, a museum down in Alborada that we were looking at their social media and they were, they were spending all this money on ads and we looked in this and I, you had one person click in the last 30 days. So does that sound like a good investment for those ads? And they said, no. So then they can take that money and use it elsewhere. So this data helps make you make better business decisions. And, and again, at the end of this, I'll, I'll open it up for questions and we can have some discussions, right? So Google Analytics, Google Search Console, this is your crystal ball. You should be looking at this information if you want to get found more on your website. Now, the beauty of the keys is it's not like your Miami where there's, you know, 1,050 plumbers, right, and you're competing with that high market, you know, there might be six plumbers in Marathon. So the chance of getting found is that much better, but you still want your website to be working really well. All this stuff you do to your website communicates with the search engines to tell them that you're there, which keeps you in the search engines, right? Um, there is... Uh, a lot of websites out here that I checked in Marathon that haven't done any major updates except for one update this year. And what Google says is, well, if you don't care about your website, we don't care about you, and they're going to bump you down. Your updates communicates with Google, lets them know you're still there. So blog, do some new posts, add some new PDFs, add some more frequently asked questions, add some new pages, add some more videos to it. Every time you sit, hit save or publish, Google comes in to look to see that you're still there. So again, when we market our business, we do a ton of SEO work, right? Um, Swiss Army was one of our first big clients. Uh, they choose us over a, a few big global companies because of our attention to detail, right? the level of detail we get. Um, it's all about communicating with the search engines. So if you're not communicating to the search engines, they don't want to deal with you. So SEO is something that is a good thing to do and you can do it in-house yourself and we'll even show you how to do it. But it's something that really needs to be done. All right, what do we got here? Social media use, right? Here's one of the biggest mistakes people make with their websites when they do social media. They do all their creation on the social media account, not from their website. If you're gonna do an update and load a picture and say, here's our event, you should be doing it on your website first, and then you copy that URL, you know, the www.mywebsite.com slash this event, and you post that on the social media, and then when people click on it, they go to your website to learn about it. So the biggest mistake I see people making, unless they're just strictly a Facebook company, meaning if they don't have a website. But if you're trying to grow business to your website, the biggest mistake they make is they just go on Facebook and start doing, you know, live videos, and that's great, but Google only shows that to about 2% of your followers. So they, they want you to make a lot of followers, but then they don't show it to a lot of people because they want to have you spend money to show it to your followers. See what's going on? So when you do something, it, it's worth taking a few extra minutes to do it on your website and then post it on your social media. Post that URL on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, on you know, chat rooms, on text messages, so that it draws traffic back to your website. Google looks at that and says, wow, they've got a lot of incoming traffic from a lot of different social media areas, right? Um, not to mention, doing it once on your website, you can then do it cross-platform versus having to go to each social account and redo it. So, if you could, do it on your website because, again, that's calling Google in to see what's going on and seeing that you have current content, fresh information that helps get you into the search engine. The problem with Facebook is it's a closed system. You don't get a lot of search results showing Facebook pages. 
because you have to log into Facebook to see it. So Google doesn't show a lot of Facebook results. So by having it on your website, that increases your search capabilities and dropping it on Facebook brings it into your website for, for traffic, which adds to your SEO. So do it on your website first, post it on the social media afterwards. It's, I know it's a little bit harder, uh, a little bit more time consuming, but in the end it's better for you. And when you do pages that you're gonna post online, um, give it some nice images, right? Some really good content, maybe put a video link on there, some calls to action, right? You know, like sign up now, or three, only three left, or reservations, you know, click here for reservations, or buy now, learn more. So there's all these things you can do once they go to it that gives them actions that they can then click on, right? And the other thing is give it a nice title, not a really long title, but a really good captive title, um, and make that impressive, right? Because what happens is when you click that link and you put it onto Facebook, Facebook pulls the information out. It pulls the images and puts it in there for you. It pulls the title. It pulls the first paragraph. So make sure that first paragraph is really descriptive and kind of capturing uh, what they're looking for something like a, you know, a call to action. Um, so you don't have to then go into Facebook and load a picture and, and put a description and all that. You can just put the link in there and it pulls it all in. So make sure that when you're creating a page to share, you know, you can even do a template in the back of your website that has this page ready to go, but all you have to do is fill in some content, save it, and then, you know, link it from there. So make your, make your work a little easier but make it more effective for the social media. And then you can go back to your Google Analytics and say, let's see how that worked. And you can see all the traffic coming in from that link. So um, keep everything relevant and up to date. Google wants fresh content. I always tell people your website's like a buffet. If you go to a buffet and there's only four plates there and it's been sitting there since nine o'clock in the morning and it's now six o'clock at night, it doesn't look too inviting. And it's not that impressive chances are you're not going to go back versus if you go to a, a buffet that has you know 50 plates and it's fresh and it's all coming out all the time and it's just it's beautiful and it's there's a nice long uh list of different desserts and and you know everything the more appealing it is the fresher it is the more popular it's going to be with google so if your site is going to be like a buffet, make sure it's fresh content because Google does not want to give you old stale information from 2017. Otherwise, if they did, they'd be Bing or Yahoo. So make sure you're doing something to your website every week, adding some more information every week. I know you're thinking that's not possible, right? I get that. Um, but again, it depends on what you want your website to do. If you want to be great in the rankings and you want to be like the number one site that shows up all the time uh, against your competitors, then it's worth it. If you don't care because you're on the, the main street and traffic drives by every day and you're busier than, you know, without the website, then, then okay. But again, your website is a great tool that should be used. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up to some questions um, and I'm going to unmute everybody. Uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, and unmute, unmute. All right, I know I kind of fed you through a garden hose, um, but I wanted to touch on a few things that maybe one or two of those things you will say, you know what, I'm going to go down that path and uh, make it worth your time. Um, these are not. Um, if, in order to do one of these justice, like using my business, to show you how to do everything and to show you some of the nuances, it would take about an hour uh, webinar for that. So um, this was kind of like a sample platter of uh, a few things you can do to help open up for business. Um, and if you have any ideas or you want to have some more of these, just talk to Daniel and I'm sure we can come out and do some more for you. Any questions? I see Michelle's muted. No questions. Joanne, do you have any questions? No, it's just something I'm going to really have to look into because I'm super savvy and uh, I use it mainly the computer as a tool for accounting and taxes. 
Yeah. What do you do for, uh, what's your business? I'm a CPA. CPA. Okay. So that's a technical thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you're probably busy enough that it's, this might not be to your advantage. The Google My Business is a great one, especially for locals. Um, I'm assuming you have a Google My Business page. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody okay, has set it up for me, but I never kept it uh, current. Okay. So I would, right now with, you know, with all of these different government programs going on, I'm so really far behind in my work, you know, trying to help save the businesses here that had to close out, you know, because of the virus and, you know, get them the PPP and bridge loans and stuff like that. And, you know, help helping them out so that if they still stay in business, we all win. Yeah. Um, so here's one thing on the reviews, especially for local, right? Uh, for something like your, your business. When people are going to leave you a review, make sure they put the phrase that they were using you for, right? Because Google pulls up reviews as a searchable item. And if the phrase is, you know, best fishing charter and marathon, and they put that in the phrase and someone's looking for best fishing charter and marathon, there's a chance that that review will pop up in the map and bump that person up in the map or that company. So um, I would suggest when things slow down in 2022 that you revisit your Google My Business site, uh, your account, and you know, check, it in. check in every now and then. And whoever set it up for you, make sure you have access to it. Because every day we have people calling us that we're, you know, we, when we take on a new client, um, we don't know who made it. They, get, they got a phone scam and some company has the access and they can't get into it and make changes. And, um, make sure you have access to it. Okay. Nothing else this week. Jackie, how are you doing? I am doing very well. Thank you, Scott. And I want to thank you for this terrific presentation. I think you did a super job in the time allotted. I was thinking, oh my God, he's never going to be able to do this within an hour. But my golly, you did. So thank you. I appreciate it. Easy to understand. And, um, I'll be able to put it to good use. Okay, what kind of business do you have? Well, I have two businesses. I have a coaching and consulting business. The business I am representing right now is C Visitor Magazines here in Key West, Florida Keys, and South Florida. So we're looking at ways that we can help our clients. Well, one of the ways for magazine, you have an, is it an online magazine? Yes. Yeah. So some of the best um, ways to help those clients is to do some articles on them because, and they don't have to be like from the main page, but you can just put them into the search engines and they're in there forever. Right? Like, like, you know, right. when something goes on the internet, it never goes away. Um, and a good value add is to recognize them within your site because it's linking back. It's, it's giving some juice to their website. Um, and they, when there's somebody looking for that particular company, your magazine might actually show up on the top page, which is good advertising for you as well. We are doing a, a major revamp of our website, which includes a lot more content for our clients. So it's, uh, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Are you changing platforms or are you just taking what you have and just updating it? Well, we, we have, we've always had a, uh, a website. And we, what we do is we're primarily print. That's how we reach our people when they're in market. Uh, we do put a copy of the magazine um, on an ebook on our website also. Good. Good. So when you're updating your site, you should never really um, kill any. Uh, if you're not going to talk, mute yourself. <laughs> So, you know, you never really want to uh, delete any URLs or anything because those are searchable and Google has them listed. And if you, so the worst thing companies can do is take a very large, robust website and start over with, you know, 12 pages and start from scratch again. Because you took oh, no. all that, it's like having a great farm that's producing a lot and then you're just chopping it down because you want to fertilize yourself. So. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we are, um, uh, we've migrated most of the content from the old site to the new site, and now we're beefing up uh, what we have and um, just trying to get it as complete as we possibly can so we can launch it. Good. 
Um, well, if you want me my second eyes on it or whatever, just feel free to reach out, <clears throat> lionfishcentral.org. Um, Will do. We do a lot of uh, free service for anything that's lionfish related. So if you have any lionfish articles, we can help you. Um, okay. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah. And one of the questions here is how do we respond to the virus on these different medias, right? So on your Google My Business page, um, Google actually puts some information like the information might not be relevant due to the virus or the hours might be different. But you right. can do a post on there, log in, create a post, um, and have a picture. Um, you can have an event. So we're opening the doors June 1st. Here's our event, uh, open for business. Come in and get some free coffee and donuts or whatever. Um, right. So you can use the Google My Business as that, right? Um, right? As far as your website, your number one search page is your homepage, right? Everyone goes to your, if you're asking your friend for a plumber, he's not going to send you a, a page, you know, that's three pages deep in a website of a plumber. He's going to send you the guy's website. So that's right. the number one search page in your website. So front and center, right? So like for Castaway, I went on there and put uh, dine-in, uh, now open, um, you know, so people that go to the website know that they're, that you can go in and dine in now. Um, right. right. And if you look at, uh, the, the different screen I had on before with those restaurants, whether they're open or not, Google's saying they're not. And if they are open and people are driving by and saying, Oh, they're not open for dine in. They're just going to drive right by those restaurants. So make sure you check your Google, my business page that they have changed it. Or if, if they have changed it, you can put it back and set it right again. Perfect. So Thank you. As far as YouTube, you could do a great video uh, introducing yourself and say, hi, I'm so-and-so with this magazine or this restaurant or this CPA firm, and we're open for business and the COVID thing, and here's our this and here's our that, and here's our hours. And you can post that right on your front page. Um, or if you have a newsletter, you can put that in the newsletter. So you can use all these products to put something out there to get your message out there about your COVID policy. Excellent. And Thanks again. Yeah, same with social distancing and same with, you know, if we're at 25% capacity. And then you can go back into YouTube and delete that when, you know, this isn't the flavor flavor of all the news medias right now, right? Because eventually this is going to go away and we're going to laugh at it and, you know, there'll be something else to worry about. But right. if you're ahead of the curve, if you're ahead of your competitors, you can get out there and get capitalized on Google finding you first. Perfect. Thanks again. You're very welcome. Um, and just a little plug for Lionfish Central. Um, again, we offer uh, just a ton of free services for anybody, for-profit, non-profit, um, divers that are out there doing some really good stuff uh, with the lionfish, right? So I'm part of an alliance that in uh, probably November, we're going to be going to Antigua to set up a protocol for the islands. Um, we, we do a lot of work with, uh, there's, a, there's a net, a, a lionfish trap that they're researching. Uh, we work with them. We're doing. We're building a new website for them. Um, we work with Castaway. We work with uh, Forever Young Dive um, Spear Fishing down in Isla Morada because he does a lot with reef. Um, we're here to do a lot of free services. And after this call, I'll be calling uh, FWC uh, for a phone uh, video conference with them for the lionfish efforts. So we're here to help. Um, I know it's not a real sexy nonprofit, but. Um, we're here with a lot of free internet services, all the geeky stuff that nobody wants to do. So it's a it's a great service too that you're doing. Thank you. And by the way, on our for-profit side, ten percent of our proceeds go to help fund the nonprofit. So, um, yeah. So if somebody hires us for SEO or web development, um, they're they're donating basically to uh, to help the lionfish fight. Good deal. All right, Daniel, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, sure. Sure. Great questions. Um, I know we had a few folks that I think we're just having some trouble logging in. So Scott, when you can just send me the recording, the link to the re recording of the webinar, and I'll blast that out um, in my chamber e-blast. And Scott and uh, your team, thank you again so much for your time. This was great. Uh, I love just, just listening, soaking it all in myself and just so wonderful. We're able to, you know, try to connect our members to these uh, great resources such as yourself and, and this info that we need during normal times, but especially during this new normal, uh, once again, great tactics to have to highlight our business. Let us stand out, whether you're a professional services like, like, like our CPA member or um, like Jackie's with the tourism-based magazines and, and other retail businesses. 
uh, we all need to be uh, seen and noticed and heard on, on the web and on Google, especially in YouTube and other uh, highly used platforms. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Have a great, safe weekend and uh, Memorial Day weekend. And we look forward to June 1. And please just always know, call your Marathon Chamber. We're here to help and serve you guys anytime at all. That's why we exist. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great one.